Hi class, so um, I know you wanted to learn a little bit about using ink and you're fascinated by the possibilities that are, uh, that are given to you by India Ink. I thought I'd do a little demonstration um, and to set up the demonstration, what I did first was I actually did some washes on some paper using different, different types of um, means of application. First means of application I did with, I just, one of those sponge brushes that you can buy at like a Home Depot. It puts a really nice mark on, on paper. It's even and smooth. Um, I'm gonna dip it now for a second and show you what happens. Basically what happens is this, where you do one coat of it, you know, I did one coat of it and I did about 30% ink and say 70% water. It's pretty thin. If you ever wanna build layers of it, you would simply just add more to it. Now you'll notice that it kind of bleeds back, but it, it will, uh, I can control it if I want, remove some of it and make it dry a little more even, or I can even pull it off the paper if I wish. And if you also notice, there are little stain marks that start to happen. So you can use a brush like this. That's one way to apply ink. A second way to apply ink instead of using that sponge would be just the brush itself. Now I'm gonna use straight ink, which is what, um, over this. This is just with a brush and it's a bigger brush. You can make mov movements back and forth. It can make it, uh, make your bristles separate and get a mark that looks like that. Okay. You can also use a, a smaller brush, using, which is the line I made here. That's another way you can go about, you know, applying ink. A different way you can do it is to simply take a towel or a cloth, dip it in your material, and then apply it straight to the paper and get a nice series of marks like that. Other tools that we use generally to apply ink are obviously the quill. And a quill makes a line and it makes, you know, can make a very fine line. Now, if you'll notice, I turned it over. That allows me to carry more ink with it. And you basically, what you do in, when you're making lines like that is you can cross hatch over it and build a network or a fabric. And it gets nice and dense as you go. And the more you practice this, the more skilled you'll get at it. You can actually take this ink and if you wish, put it over a wash. So that's cross hatching with it. You can just do straight lines if you, if you find that that would be helpful. You, know, you can control it that much. You can do other types of marks. Little kind of comma shapes. Those are also quite useful. Um, so that's a quill and that's a metal quill. Okay, it's a tip and it carries ink. Another way you can go about this, great. Sorry about the little mix up, but is a bamboo quill, which is a slightly thicker line. Once again, you can go right over the top of your gray wash if you want, depending on how tight you want to space it. Now I'm going to use some water in my ink, make it a little more wet. Another manner which you can apply ink would be something like something you find in nature, just a twig. make it kind of scratchy or kind of a little natural line that's kind of fun to work with you can be work it that way I've also used now this where I put it on with a cloth 
This is a just a bristle brush. And the more you move it, the more you can kind of dry it out. And because the bristles are like individual, look at the nice and dense that gets. Um, you can get a scratchy line, which can be kind of useful. You may want to, um, you know, dry it out on a separate piece of paper and then use it. And once you make a line like that or make a, uh, a series, you can still put line down over the top of it. Or you can draw forms if you wish. You can work with a smaller brush if you'd like. This is relatively smooth paper. Maybe, you know, this like little quick figure sketch. If I start to add some value to it, you start to recognize it more as a figure itself. You can put washes over lines, network of lines that you've done. Once they dry, you can still coat it. And you'll still see the original line that you put down. On this gray paper, I put the same washes down. And I thought I'd give you a chance to see a different way to approach it. This is white Conti. So white Conti going down on gray paper does leaves that kind of a mark. So you have kind of a light to it. You can also do the same thing across the surface of those dark patches, those dark shades. Once you've established this, you can even use this as a way of, of, of highlighting. So if you have a Connie crown, you can use it. You can do it as line if you wish and do your cross hatching that way over the top of it. This is a slightly um, skinnier bamboo brush. Let's see what this does. Gotta get a little more on it. Sometimes these get stuck. Yeah, there you go. what happens if it's very wet. Once it becomes very wet, it becomes a lot easier to move. Try another one. Once they have ink dried on them, they're not as fluid. I find it a fun material to work with. Even when you put the chalk down, you can still draw over the top. Go get some extra ink. It'll take, it might take some coaxing, but you should be able to. And what you'll find is it'll dry. 
Um, let's see what else I can do with this. Maybe isolate it, move that chalk around a little bit. So that's very black ink now. That's thin ink. This is a different paper. Let me show you what happens when you try this. If, uh, give me that. That's across the tape. And what will happen is where you leave the tape, it'll block it. And you peel it back up and it'll mask it out for you. So that's actually kind of an interesting approach too. Perfectly legal. You know, you can try that if you wish. Um, so, I mean, I've made a ton of little scratches and little marks here for you to see. Give you a chance to explore this material if you like. I know you might feel a little bit intimidated by it. Where's it? Quill. This is my favorite though, is the metal. I like the metal quill because it's so precise. And I, you know, you can really control it if you want. If you just take your time, you can. And you can add value by adding line and leaving space. And however you leave your space will dictate how much value you add or how thick you nest your lines. Or the direction you put your lines in. I mean, you don't have to just make straight lines, you can make swivels. You know, I just dipped it in water and that gave my line a little more life, a little more flow to it. until I run out of ink, and then I'll just go get more ink. So it doesn't have to be organized. It can be um, kind of helter-skelter. But if you keep working it and working it, And working it, eventually it's gonna get really dark and really dense. I mean, down here it became quite beautiful where it, it dried. This is thicker paper, okay? It's almost like a Bristol board. It's got a little more body to it. Look at how straight it stays. When I put the washes on, nothing happened. Over here, this is a thinner sheet of paper, just regular drawing paper. It puckers um, and kind of blooms and, and gets wavy. That's an attractive way to make a mark. You can actually draw into that where the ink is still wet and pull it out if you wish. That's a valuable, and you can kind of change your form. I can do it over here too if I want. I think it's still wet over here. Yeah, we'll pull it across. Yes. And add shadow to light in that fashion. And where you only leave a little bit of space, it becomes really kind of dappled light we have a lot of space, it's very, very um, bright. So that's that's just a little bit of a, kind of a get comfortable with the material a little bit. Try to introduce it to you so you can see it a little bit in action. Um, like I said, I set it up with, you know, you can use a sponge, which gives you an even mark. You can use a bigger brush, soft, this is soft. And it's a, this is an expensive brush. It's actually got a really nice feel to it. Um, It'll give you a nice smooth, it's a watercolor brush. You'll notice the short, shorter handle. Um, so you can kind of grip it and move it around. You 
You also can use, a, you know, this is a, a bristle brush or a short watercolor flat, pardon me, a flat, a flat brush with a flat edge. Just because it has a flat edge doesn't mean it doesn't make other marks. And by that, I mean, it can go this way. It can go this way. It can go that way. So you do three work, three marks with the same, the same tool. You know, you may want to use a round. This is actually a round brush. Once again, playing with the idea that the ink is wet, you can move it in a lot of different ways. You can go, once it's wet like this, actually, I don't know if you can see that, but move it around quite a bit. Once it dries, you can still go over the top of it and create atmosphere that way. So that's kind of like a one on one -er on how to start with this stuff. You know, the quills are quite nice. The bristles, this is the other bristle brush I used, which has kind of got harder bristles, almost like a toothbrush kind of thing. It's a paint, oil painting brush. You can make a mark like that. It'll carry more ink. You can also do it from a distance too. So that's a little bit of a mess, but I think it's a nice mess. Um, what happens here now when I pull this off? Oh, look. It blocked it. So there you go. That's a little bit of a primer. I'll do another one for you later. Sorry about the little spillage to begin with. I'll get used to this and uh, hope this is useful.